I actually get into the specifics of my project, I'd like to take a moment to acquaint everybody in the room with the reality of ADHD. So attention deficit hyperactivity disorder is one of the most commonly diagnosed childhood learning differences within the United States. Um, it affects about 9% of US children ages 13 to 18, and it is characterized by dysregulation of attention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity. And I'd like to take a moment to reiterate that ADHD is a learning difference. That does not mean that people diagnosed with it learn in any different way, or they do learn in a different way, but it doesn't mean that they can't learn. It's just unique to themselves. Um, and this is so important because within the United States, studies have found that approximately 2 to 8% of the college population has ADHD. And I'm not discussing people who have gotten a prescription for Adderall. I mean those who have actually been clinically diagnosed. So I chose ADHD as the focus of my engaged learning project for many reasons, but the biggest being that as someone who was diagnosed with it at the age of six, I've always been fascinated by the ways it manifests itself among students. Um, it has been widely documented that individuals who have ADHD tend to experience adverse outcomes such as lower grades and career prospects. But what people tend to overlook though is that alongside these studies, there is a wealth of research that depicts individuals with ADHD who have not only been as successful as their peers without ADHD, but who have actually surpassed them. So as such, the original goal for this project was to adapt an existing strengths-focused behavioral intervention designed by Dr. Bing for the, to improve the academic success and emotional well-being of students with ADHD. However, in engaged learning projects, as in life, things don't always go to plan. The scientific method involves creating and testing hypotheses analyzing those results and using those results to adapt that hypothesis and then doing the entire thing over again. And as I reviewed the literature of the biological basis of ADHD, effective treatment options, and predictors of success, I realized that ADHD had a very fun relationship to the science of motivation. Now before I actually tell you what that is and why it's so important, I'd like to take a closer look at the methods of two and three. So after obtaining IRB approval and training and interview techniques, I moved on to conduct key informant interviews with 11 participants, nine students, and two advisors in the hopes of corroborating what the literature had to say about the actual experience of ADHD. And as I did so, many themes emerged that confirmed my suspicions of motivation and ADHD, and it prompted me to re revise my entire hypothesis. Um, all the participants confirmed the literature when they reported that things such as passion for a subject good habits and routines, exercise, mindfulness, and dopamine-boosting medications all allow them to experience subjective increases in focus and attention and academic success. Beyond these results, though, what we are now calling an achievement divide emerged. We observed something that separated participants into those who actively internalized and engaged in those good habits from those who seemed unable or unlikely to do so. In addition, those students who did internalize those good habits all were more likely to define themselves as academically successful. The question then became, what is it that causes some individuals with ADHD to internalize and to be so successful, and how are they doing it? If you can all remember Dylan's presentation, you'll remember that there's a distinct, a distinct association of motivation and value that can lead to educational success among all individuals. Well, in the course of this project, we realized that this relationship is extremely influential in students with ADHD. And based on the conclusions within the scientific literature of motivation and our own results, we found that the, when value and motivation are specifically aligned in ADHD students, they report in, extremely increased academic success. Because the project is still ongoing and partic potential participants could be in the audience today, I can't actually tell you what our hypothesis is for why we think that happens, but I can say that one of the most common elements that are results from this alignment is an ability to hack their own biology. So ADHD is a dysregulation of focus, meaning you can either overattend to a stimulus or underattend. And we typically call this hyperfocus or hyperactivity. And that hyperfocus seems to emerge in the students who have this association of motivation and values. And in effect, they use hyperfocus to cheat the ADHD neurological system and achieve academic success. So in that question I posted on the last page, this is the what. And now we're looking into the how in hopes of finding an answer that allows all individuals less with ADHD to turn a potential disadvantage into an advantage. Thank you.